This is Porterville College Physics 102A, Chapter 2 Homework Solutions. We start with number 13. This is regarding a trip from the Earth to the Moon. Uh, it asks for what the average speed for the trip is. So average speed is the distance divided by the time. Now we need to get this in meters per second. So there it is in meters, 385. Uh, since it was times 10 to the third kilometers, that's going to be times 10 to the six meters. Divide by 2.5 days, let's convert one day over 86,400 seconds, and that gives us 1782 meters per second. The answer rounded to two significant figures is 1800 meters per second. Question 19, average acceleration to boost a spacecraft. So here we have the initial velocity is 1250, final velocity 1870 meters per second. It takes place over 35 seconds. So average acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. You do the difference. Uh, change is always final minus initial divided by 35 seconds and you get 17.7 .7 meters per second. Number 31, we have a displacement of 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. That's something you can look up uh, in the back of the book, the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So we take average velocity as displacement over time, but we solve that for time. So time is displacement over average velocity and we divide those two values and we get 500 seconds or 8 minutes and 20 seconds. Number 33. There are two parts of this race. The first part you run for the first 100 meters 4 meters per second. The second part you run 5 meters per second. What is the average speed? Okay. So in order to find average speed, keep in mind where we're going right here at the bottom of the page, average speed is displacement divided by time. We know that the displacement was 200 meters, but we need to find the total time. So let's break it down into the two legs of the trip. I've labeled them A and B. So what is the time for A? What is the time for B? Then we'll add those up together. So the time for A is the distance for A divided by speed. So the distance for A was 100 meters divided by the speed 4 meters per second. So the time for part A is 25 seconds. We do the same thing for part B. It's the distance of 100 meters divided by the speed of 5 meters per second. And so B only took 20 seconds. We add those together. We get the total run was 25 plus 20 seconds, 45 seconds. And now we can put that in at the bottom of the page, average velocity is the displacement, 200 meters, divided by 45 seconds, which gives 4.4 meters per second. Number 39. A dog sled goes straight at 9.5 meters per second for 10 hours. Then they rest for the remainder of the day. What's the average velocity for 24 hours? Okay, average velocity is displacement over time. Um, let's figure out what the displacement is. So displacement is they went 9.5 meters per second for 10 hours. Multiply those together. And we're going to want to turn this into, uh, into seconds because our speed was given in meters per second. So we get that their displacement was 342,000 meters. Uh, here I do a conversion. Time one day is 86,400 seconds. And so now when we want to find the average velocity for the entire day, displacement over time, they went 342,000 meters. 
but we're dividing over the entire day, 86,400 seconds. So for the entire day, their average velocity was 3.96 meters per second. Notice that that's significantly slower than the 9.5 meters per second they were running, but that's because they were resting for most of the day. Number 53. 53 and 55 go together. So if you look at the directions above 53, it says that velocity is given as a function of 1.4 t squared plus 1.1 t. And for 53, it says find the car's velocity at the end of the four second interval. Find the average acceleration for this interval. Okay, so velocity at the end of four seconds is just plugging in four into the formula for velocity. Let t equals four, and you get 26.8 meters per second. Part B, average acceleration, is change in velocity over change in time. Well, it went from zero to 26.8, so its change in velocity was 26.8 meters per second over a time of four seconds, so that's 6.7 meters per second squared. Number 55 says estimate the instantaneous acceleration at two seconds. So the way you estimate instantaneous acceleration is you find average acceleration over a small t interval, uh, time interval. Now I chose between 1.9 and 2.1 seconds. You might choose 1.95 and 2.05. You might do 1.99 and 2.01 but have it a small interval that's symmetric around two seconds. This is the one I chose. So when I did that, I found the time for 1.9, or the velocity at that time, by plugging into the original formula. So you plug in 1.9 into this formula for velocity. Then, uh, time of 2.1. I plugged that in and got that velocity. The reason I'm plugging in for those velocities is here's the average acceleration equation, change in velocity over change in time. So change in velocity is the final velocity minus initial. Those are those velocities I computed over here, divided by the time interval, 2.1 minus 1.9, which is 0.2 seconds. And I got 6.7 meters per second squared, which is the same as uh, part B in number 53. Number 59. Driving at 50 kilometers per hour, traffic light 40 meters away turns yellow, constant acceleration required to stop, and what is the stopping time? Okay, we need to convert to meters per second, so I've done the conversion already right here. 13.8 repeating meters per second. Displacement is 40 meters. Our final velocity is zero. So if we want to know acceleration, we'll use this kinematic equation, but we'll solve it for acceleration. So A equals V squared minus V naught squared over two delta X. V in this case is zero, so I just got rid of it when I plugged in the numbers. And you see we get an acceleration of negative 2.41 meters per second squared. Very reasonable. Uh, that's just a fraction of what uh, acceleration due to gravity is. Part B is asking what is the stopping time? Now that we know the final velocity, the initial velocity, and now the acceleration, just plug those into this formula, t equals v minus v naught over a, and I got that from the kinematic equation, just solving it for t, and I get 5.76 seconds. Sixty-one. Okay, the golfer uh, gives uh, initial velocity, acceleration, will the ball make it to the hole 4.80 meters away? 
different ways to solve this. Um, when you look at what I did part B, part B is actually another way to solve part A, but let's look at what I chose to do. I did this. I asked the question, what will, how far will it go? What's its displacement if we, uh, if we take it at its stopping point? When it gets to V equals zero, how far will it have gone? And it goes like this. If that displacement is less than 4.8 meters, the distance to the hole, that means it will not make it to the hole because it will have stopped. If it's 4.8 meters or greater, that means it will get to the hole. So that's how I choose to solve this. But in a minute, I'll tell you about uh, another way to solve this is to do part B. OK, so uh, we know we don't know displacement. We know we're assuming from the setup the final velocity, 0. Initial velocity and acceleration, that's a good setup to use this kinematic equation. v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x. When you solve for displacement, as you can see what I've done on the screen there, you get 4.885 meters. That's greater than 4.8 meters. That means it will go past the hole. Or, I'm sorry, once it gets to the hole, it will uh, just sink in. Now, another way that you could have done uh, part A is to have solved it like this. Assume that displacement is 4.8 meters and figure out what its velocity will be. If it has a negative or maybe an imaginary velocity, anything that's not positive and real, that means that it never makes it to the hole. I am guess it would uh, probably give an imaginary number for velocity. Well, uh, so that's another way you could have solved part A. But we get down to part B. Now that we've figured out in part A that it will make it to the hole, part B then says, OK, what speed is it going? So we do this equation. And again, if it didn't make it to the hole, this would be an imaginary answer. And so we get velocity is 0.332 meters per second. Number 71. Rock and roller coaster accelerates in a straight line from rest to 60 miles per hour. What's its constant acceleration and how far does it travel in the first 2.8 meters per second? All right, well, first we need to convert that final velocity. You see my conversion here to 26.816 repeating meters per second in a time of 2.8 seconds. So part A. Uh, we just do acceleration as change in velocity over time and get 9.6 meters per second squared. Part B, asking how far does it go, let's use this kinematic equation. x equals x naught, which went to 0, plus v naught t, well since v naught is 0, that goes to 0, plus the only part that's remaining is 1 half a t squared. We solved for a in part a t is 2.8 seconds, so when we plug in those numbers, we get 38 meters. Number 75 and 79 go nicely together. They both involve a free fall drop. 75, uh, theme park drops 25.6 meters straight down from rest. Find the time for the drop and the velocity at the bottom. OK, notice the diagram that I've drawn. I've drawn my positive y-axis going down because the motion is downward. y naught and v naught initially are 0. Acceleration is positive 9.80 because it's in the positive, the downward direction. Final y is 25.6. We want to know velocity and time. So to solve for velocity, here's a good kinematic equation to use. Since you know acceleration and delta y, plug those in, and you get 22.4 meters per second.
Now that you know that 22.4 meters per second is the final velocity, the easiest way to solve the other part for time is to do V minus V naught over A. That's from uh, another kinematic equation. Change in velocity is 22.4 meters per second minus zero. Divide by acceleration, 9.8, you get 2.29 seconds. Seventy-nine involves a free fall on the planet Mars. So it's asking to solve for acceleration due to gravity, which is not going to be 9.8 meters per second squared, because that's only on the planet Earth. On Mars, it's going to be something different. That's the point of this problem. The astronaut wants to know what is acceleration due to gravity on Mars. So he drops a known distance. Um, y naught, v naught are equal to zero. Acceleration we don't know. Displacement is 45.2 meters. The time it takes to hit is 5.01 seconds. So when we know those in piece of information, we want to know acceleration. Here's a good equation right here. y equals y naught is zero, v naught t is zero, and we're left with one half a t squared. So when we solve that for acceleration, we get 2y over t squared. You plug in those numbers and you get uh, 3.60 meters per second squared. The last problem of chapter 2. Number 95, the ball thrown straight up in the air at 12.1 meters per second and we want to know the time that it's at a height of 5.20 meters. If you look at my diagram, keep in mind it's going to do that twice, going up and then going back down. Acceler I'm making up the positive y-axis. Acceleration is therefore negative, 9.80 meters per second squared. And we have everything we need to know to figure out the time. So we use this kinematic equation, y equals y naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Y then, because we're evaluating at 5.20 meters, initial y naught is zero, velocity 12.1 t, this plus one half times negative 9.8. So I just put minus 4.9 t squared. If I'm going to solve a quadratic equation, I uh, usually put in standard form, meaning get everything over to one side of the equation. Quadratic formula, I don't show the solution to that. That's just basic algebra there. Uh, but use quadratic formula to solve that. And we get two times. The time going up, 0.553 seconds, and going down, 1.915 seconds. Part B then asks, what is the velocity at those times? Well, you can plug into the equation v equals v naught plus a t. And for the first time, going up 0.553 seconds, plug that in. Remember to make acceleration negative 9.8. And you should get an answer of plus 6.7 meters per second. For the second time of 1.915 seconds, plugging in, you should get negative 6.7 meters per second. And notice that going up and coming down at the same height, they're the same speed, just going in opposite directions. And that's what the positive and the negative mean. And that is all for chapter two.